to our chair of central management and intergovernmental committee chair commissioner jewel i have one item under uh, my committee it is a uh, resolution supporting the commitment to, uh, to the county legislative priorities and the integrity of one county. Does somebody want to move it? I would move that, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Support. Supported by Commissioner Boyle. Um, I'd look to administration to frame it. Well, uh, uh, Chair Jewell, commissioners, I think, uh, Chair Jewell, you said it very well, that uh, um, uh, the purpose of this legislation or this resolution rather, is to uh, uh, confirm our process and approach to supporting our legislative priorities and preserving the integrity of a um, uh, single uh, uh, United St. Louis County. Um, and that is what the, the resolution does. I think the board letter speaks for itself. It uh, talks to a, a potential dialogue around um, uh, legislation um, that uh, might authorize a referendum or in some format a division of St. Louis County. Um, uh, of course, this is not an unfamiliar topic periodically. It seems uh, approximately every 10 years or so there's some buzz around this. Um, uh, the board letter talks about uh, legislation in the mid 60s, uh, proposed legislation, uh, uh, study in the 70s, uh, 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 more legislation uh, proposed in the 90s and I believe even in uh, the early 2000s. Um, but uh, 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 in brief, uh, Commissioner Nelson has approached uh, administration and asked this to be brought to the board on his prerogative uh, to again affirm uh, a commitment to uh, the board process of vetting and reviewing uh, legislative priorities and initiatives uh, and uh, uh, affirming our commitment to uh, not dividing the county or keeping it as a single uh, entity. I do know that I have two folks, I think, who wish to speak to this, uh, the first of which, Bob Tannen. Is this your item that you want to speak to, Bob? Are we on the county yes. yes. My hearing aids don't work quite as good as they should. I apologize for missing some of the discussion. Well, I'm, I'm, thank you for this chance to address the board. I'm Bob Tammon, my wife Pat and I live in Sudan, Minnesota. And I can't say that I bring any great expertise to splitting a county, but I was involved in splitting a township. Back 40 years ago, Brighting Township, which includes Sudan, was actually close to a double township. Instead of six by six, it was six by 12 with some irregularities. The people that lived to the east of Sudan, out in the woods, the people lived on the lake, thought those of us who live in Sudan were soaking up more than our share of tax dollars. With the help of Senator Doug Johnson at the time, they started the process, they split away. So now we have two townships. We have Brighting, we have Eagle's Nest. And of course, there are some duplication of services and whatnot, but still, most of us have adapted to the new normal, but I think the board should be aware of perhaps some of the unintended consequences. When it started out, our complete township tended to be in the majority supportive of mining. When they split the township up, they took the people out in the woods, they took the people out in the lake, they made a new township, Eagles Nest, Eagles Nest Township, which has been officially on record as opposing sulfide mining. Now I would point out, I don't think that was Dougie Johnson's attempt to create a political entity that would oppose sulfide mining. And I think we should be aware of unintended consequences. There's an old saying that, uh, Sometimes the gods <coughs> punish us by giving us what we ask for. I don't believe we should ask for a split of St. Louis County. There will probably be unintended consequences. I support the resolution and oppose splitting St. Louis County. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, uh, Commissioner For Forsbun, I think you uh, want to speak as well. It's hard for us not to call you Commissioner Forsman, you know. <laughs> you're, you're 
Well, I, after I get done uh, doing a dance up here and trying to take and be between my two uh, <laughs> friends here, Commissioner Ruckovina and Commissioner Nelson here, you'll say, hey, he is a pretty good politician here, you know. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'll, I'll go back to 1997. Uh, my uh, my friend uh, Tommy Ruccovino was a representative at the time. Put in the uh, the, the uh, a bill to split St. Louis County, and at that time, I can remember saying that I uh, that I thought that there was a duplication of services and uh, would would uh, some of the same things that Bob just alluded to there were were in that statement that I made in 1997 as a commissioner at the time, and uh, I remember Tom coming and telling me. In fact, we had a we had a rough go at one time, and it was there was a definitely a north south split at the time that uh, at uh, on some issue, and I can't even remember the issue. I just remember that it was pretty contentious, and I remember Commissioner Rukavina telling me he says, "Now would you split this St. Louis County? Would you split it now?" And I said, "I says I think I'd be right th right on board with you at that time." I've watched this county board, this particular county board right here, and uh, and uh, and the county board that I served with, uh, certainly in my my later years on the board. I think the board has got a lot more cohesive than it has been in the past. I think that what we have is a board that, for most issues, and I've watched a lot of your issues. They're unanimous issues. They're ninety percent. You know, they're they're six one if or whatever. They're, they're you you your record shows that you are a relatively co cohesive board. And as I said before, I think that you do things very efficiently, and uh, your bond rating, all those things speak to a good county government. I'll I'll be real honest. If I could have my way, and I and. Uh, one of my major issues, and this is where I'm going to differ a little bit with uh, with the this, the statement of of not splitting St. Louis County. Well, first of all, let me say this, and is that I think that at the legislature, I think that even if a bill is introduced, it's not going to go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere in 1997, other than the fact that it made all of us think. It did make all of us think. But what I would say is that. That the, uh, the 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 one thing that that goes through my mind when we look at St. Louis County, and uh, is that I always used to be really proud that the fourth district, uh, Commissioner Ruckavina's district, is 62 percent of the county landmass wise. There, only one seventh of the of the population, but it's 62 percent of the county. So if we're going to split it. I'd say just let the fourth district us be in one spot there. That's all. I'd, I'd be happy with that there and stuff. And so you know, just let the fourth district split out there, and it'd be okay there and stuff. But the uh, but the cost to in going on the on the other side is that the cost to to, to St. Louis County with two different governments. We might get in a spot with. One of my passions is that I that I'm very supportive of mining. I mean, to like it or not, both uh, both uh, as a as a 34 year uh, steel worker, as someone that's been watched the evolution of mining from what it was at one time with uh, taconite mining to what it is today, and to looking at and and I don't see the same support out of the southern part of the the, the county. For, uh, in aggregate, not not necessarily on this board. So to that point, and like I said, I'm doing this dance right now so that everybody knows that I, I'm, I, I want that commissioner a little bit disappointed, and I want that commissioner a little bit disappointed. But I also want to point out that it, that uh, that I that I that I, if I could have, I, I said it in 1997. I thought that the after looking at it and looking at the the the, the work that everybody did, our staff did, etc., that it would cost us in aggregate to split our counties, and we would end up with uh, two different uh, two different administrations, a duplication of some of the services, and and all of those things in, involved there, is that we decided that we decided as a board. Not to take and support Commissioner Rukavina. 
I'll say it that one more time is that at one point in, at, at, at a fairly contentious uh, moment, I looked at my, my representative, I says, I said, I'll be with you the next time there and stuff. I'm not sure that I'm there right now because things, this board has evolved into something that's working a little better. Uh, so did you get a good answer for me? No, but you at least, uh, you got some of my thoughts on it there and stuff, so. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Forsman. Um, uh, did anybody, uh, Commissioner Nelson. Just one very brief comment. Um, and I, I'm sure that I may have others, but um, <coughs> Commissioner Forsman, it is not possible for me to be disappointed in you. That is a physical impossibility. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Other comments, Mr. Commissioner? Mr. Chair. Uh, did you have your hand you up? Know, I don't know if I ask you or, or ask Commissioner Nelson okay. for a personal privilege. Oh, personal privilege? Uh, uh, five you. minutes. Five minutes, thank you. Okay, I think uh, Commissioner Rukavina. Well, you know, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, it's no secret uh, that when I was in the legislature, uh, I certainly uh, introduced legislation. Uh, I wasn't the only one. Before me, there was uh, Representative Begich uh, who introduced legislation. Uh, before Representative Begich, there was Senator Tony Perpich who introduced legislation. Uh, but all of that, you know, legislation, and there seems to be a misconception that somehow uh, somebody can put in a bill and not allow the people to have their say. And every bill that I know of that was introduced would allow the people to vote. We live in a democracy, not a dictatorship. And, you know, I like to listen to the citizens uh, that I represent, both as a state representative and as a school board member and as a town board member and now as a county commissioner and many, many times. In fact, three times this morning before I left the house, I got calls from uh, people that uh, saw it in the paper or must have seen it on the TV. I didn't know anything about the TV station, but uh, I know I got called by uh, uh, this journalist here. Uh, but again, I, I, I don't watch that much TV, so uh, I didn't see any news. But I think we should listen to our citizens. And, you know, this... Uh, I don't know who drafted this, if you drafted it, uh, Commissioner Nelson, or if staff drafted it, but there's some very misleading inaccuracies in here. Now, the first four whereas's have nothing to do, as far as I'm concerned, with the issue. The fifth one, the idea of dividing St. Louis County has been pursued on multiple occasions, and each time has been rejected by both the County Board of Commissioners and or the Minnesota State Legislature is not being in the interest of the citizens. Well, I can tell you that, I don't know about the board, because I wasn't here, but in 1997 when I had that bill, it passed in the Minnesota House of Representatives, and it passed by a pretty good margin. And so I don't know where the Minnesota State Legislature rejected it, uh, the fact of the matter is, at that time, Dougie Johnson had it in the back of his mind, Senator Johnson, that he was running for governor, and uh, he didn't want to, he didn't do anything with the bill in the Senate because he didn't want to anger the people in Duluth, I would suspect. I'm, you know, speculating. And at the same time, my senator, who had the jackets, Senator Janicich, two years later ran for the United States Senate, and he didn't want to make anybody angry in Duluth if he thought that that would happen. And so the bill in the Senate never got introduced or might have been introduced. It never was heard in any committees. So, and then the next whereas, the uh, uh, legislative priority, well, it's the people who decide. And the next whereas, the division of the county will result in duplication of services that can be reduced by working as one strong entity rather than two separate agencies, uh, and I don't know where that's ever been proven. I, I don't know that. You know, again, we live in a democracy. People should be able, and the people we represent should be heard. I recall Commissioner Nelson when 
over a decade ago, you were making your point how you listened to your constituents, and you said if your constituents told you to support slavery, you'd even do that because you listened to them. So all I'm trying to do is listen to my constituents, and I really don't appreciate the fact that, you know, I got attacked in the paper and attacked uh, a little bit last night on TV by you for supporting my constituents. I'm glad that Commissioner, or former Commissioner, but I always call him Commissioner Forsman is here today because Commissioner Forsman was at a meeting recently, I think at the end of December uh, it was, in a joint powers meeting between Morris Township, which surrounds Ely, it's four geographic townships, uh, the city of Ely, the city of Linton, the city of Babbitt, and the uh, Ely School Board, and I brought up the issue about the county, and I got nothing but accolades, and in fact, Senator Bach and Representative Eklund were there, and they said, you know, maybe we gotta study this issue because, and Senator Bach said, and see what the benefits and the negative and positive things are. So, if you wanna bring up the history, let's bring up the history because when I did the bill in 97, I went back in history and I noticed that in 1894, this issue came up. The people of Tower and Sedan, Brighting Township, and the city of Ely and Winton and those school section township, they call it around there, and Morris Township had requested to split the county. And it never happened. Uh, you know, other counties next to us have gotten a vote on this issue. Uh, Cook County split from Lake County. Kuchichin County split from uh, Itasca County. Lake of the Woods County split from Beltrami County. But in our case, and in all of these situations, whether it was 1894, whether it was Tony Perpich's bill, whether it was Joe Begich's bill, whether it was my bill, the citizens didn't get to vote. So, you know, my question is, what's... What is this county board, as you say, the county board has been against this, but the county board, well, re well elected by the citizenship, have never let the citizens weigh in on this issue. And my question is, after 162 years, uh, let's just look at the facts. Show us where the money comes from, where it goes, where the jobs are, where the amenities are. Uh, you know... I know for a fact, and I brought it up to you folks before that, and, and this was just handed out this year, that that Commissioner for District, out of $16,614,798,000 of uh, estimated market value in this county, my one-seventh of the population district pays almost a quarter of all the taxes. And so I have my own opinions, but I'll tell you what, I may be totally wrong. And I might be a little guy, but I've always been big enough to admit when I was wrong. So show me I'm wrong. Let's look at the facts. We've never really looked in depth at the facts. And then when the facts are there, let's let the people decide. Again, we live in a democracy, not a dictatorship. You know, uh, I brought up this issue and pulled this one uh, this one uh, resolution down because I, I wanted to bring up again that we got the most, the richest township in St. Louis County asking us to help with a bike trail. The richest unorganized township in St. Louis County, those residents asking us to help with a bike trail. One of the probably third or fourth richest townships, BD Township and Lake of the Woods Township, all bordering lakes, uh, uh, Lake Vermilion, asking us, please help us with a bike trail. And we couldn't do it. Not once, but twice it got tabled. Twice it got tabled. Commissioner Boyle, you can talk about we're healthy when we work together, but twice, and you made the motion last time, to table a little resolution and made that woman sit there for the second time for eight hours and tabled so there was no debate about a little bike trail. I don't have to bring up the Port Authority. I brought it up this year when we appointed more people. We've never not had a St. Louis County Commissioner on the Duluth Port Authority. But last year, 
we put on Commissioner Stauber as our northern, I guess, and he used to be Iron Range Commissioner, now it's our northern commissioner, but Commissioner Stauber, I hate to point this out, but you don't go very far north in St. Louis County and are nowhere near the mines that make that harbor work. And when I asked you at the reappointment after we uh, had our uh, elected Commissioner Nelson chair, I, I asked one of you, Commissioner Boyle, Commissioner Stauber, is this n not right? Let Commissioner Yugovich be on the Port Authority. Nobody would step down. So, you know, we're kind of in a dilemma here uh, for some of you. I have no problem. Commissioner Nel Nelson, if this is a six to one vote, I have absolutely no problem with that. I've been in the minority on several occasions. I might point out that Commissioner uh, Forsman hit the nail on the head because since I've been on this board, probably, what, 95% of all the resolutions passed seven to nothing. And I've had a number of them where I, they were six to one. And I've been the lone wolf, so to speak, maybe the lone ranger. But I'm not ashamed of that because I'm sticking up for my citizens. So after 162 years of being a county and 120 years at least of the citizens of this county saying, show us the facts and let us vote, we've never allowed a vote. We've never allowed a vote. Uh, so that's all I'm asking. Can somebody pull these facts together, which this resolution doesn't do, it just says the St. Louis County Board does not support legislation. My question is, do the people of St. Louis County, whether they live in Duluth or Grand Lake Township or Morris Township or wherever, do they support it? That's who we should listen to. So I don't support this resolution. There's a lot of inaccuracies in it. Uh, uh, and the bottom line is, after 162 years, when, by the way, the only city in the county was Duluth, you know, in 1856, at the southernmost end of this county is where the county seat is. And when I've asked about a few jobs being put up in Ely, uh, ask about a few jobs being put in other places, I get told by, just recently, by Administrator Gray, who is back there right now, well, you know, Tommy, the county's like a corporate headquarters, and the county seat is like the corporate, where the corporation is located. And so that's why we put a lot of these jobs, the big jobs, in Duluth. Now, we have technology that you could be anywhere in this county and do your job. but. So far, that hasn't happened either. So, you know, I don't see a win-win with this current uh, with this current resolution for anybody, but perhaps me. You know, if the three Duluth commissioners vote against it, it's only going to pique everybody's curiosity. What are they afraid of showing us, Commissioner Stauber? You're kind of in limbo here between everything, and you're going to be going around this summer and fall asking people to vote for you. And if you vote today on this current resolution, you're not allowing the people that you're asking to vote for you to vote. It seems like a rather maybe irony in the whole situation. So nobody has introduced any legislation yet. I've asked for it. I've introduced it over the years. And yes, I've asked my uh, representative and senator to put in a bill to allow us to vote. And I don't know if they'll even do that. So, you know, whether this was put here to try to embarrass me or not, I'm not embarrassed at all. I have never been embarrassed about looking for the facts for St. Louis County, looking at all the facts, where the money comes from, where it goes, where all these little pots of money, whether they're federal money or Thai Blotnik money or mineral royalties or taconite taxes, where they come from and where those jobs are. I've never been afraid to ask those questions and to look for those facts. So maybe it's time that we look and get somebody to pull all those facts together because this issue isn't going away. 
It's going to be here. It's been here for at least 120 years that I know of, 1894, like I said, so, you know, over 120 years, and it'll probably be here for a long time to come, unless somebody asks our administration and maybe an independent uh, group, again, like that study that was done by the IRRB in 1974, to pull the facts together and show them to the people. And finally, finally, not worry about what the legislature did or what the county board did. I love this one. Uh, I don't know where I saw it in here about uh, acting in the best interest of the citizens, but the citizens have never been allowed to vote. And that's the point that I think we should discuss here today. So with that, Mr. Chair, thank you for allowing me uh, this uh, opportunity to speak on this issue. And uh, again, Maybe it's time that we actually pulled some facts together to let the citizens of this county see, see the facts in their full open umbrella of facts. Okay. Other comments? Commissioners? I do. Yeah, Commissioner Djukovic. Thank you, Chair Jewell. Uh, over the last uh, few days, I've had the opportunity to you know, pull together some information on the history of dialogue that's taken place about a possible split and it was interesting uh, there's been a number of we'll start with 74 there was a study done in 74 by the IRRB but it was not a complete study it was a social economic and organizational study and geographically it said we could stay the same and and it called it feasible to split um, but again costs were never analyzed so we, we didn't get a good idea in 1974 what it's going to cost to split st. Louis County and I think that's huge you know if you read if you do your homework a little bit in 1997 there was an article by the Duluth News Tribune and it said it could cost the taxpayers of st. Louis County 18 million dollars to split there was a list of possible things that would be costing I don't know where it came from but I, I read it and, and it was very interesting Again, no complete analysis was done. In 2007, there was a technical outline of the subdivision of St. Louis County uh, by then Administrator Dana Fry, did I get that right? Um, and it said considerable work needs to be done to do the study. And it's, I, to my knowledge, I don't think we've ever had a complete study done. So, you know, that being the case, uh, I want to make it perfectly clear. I don't think that we are ready to go to the legislature to vote. I think we're ready to get the information to the residents of St. Louis County, and I'm sure everyone on this board has, has heard from constituents. I heard from many, and I, I got the same question. What does it mean? What happens? What does it cost? And I said, I don't know. I don't know. I would never buy a new car without knowing what the monthly payment is going to be. So I think you have to have an idea of where this takes us. I believe personally we're stronger together. I do. And I think, Commissioner, you hit it on the head. I mean, it, I think we've made progress. I do. And I think we continue to make progress. I think this is a solid board. We don't always agree, but we do, the majority of the time, push forward votes with a high percentage of unanimous, you know, opinions. So. We're back to the, the question, what does it cost? And, and to be honest with you, I, I, I really want to know, my constituents want to know, and, and I think maybe it, it's time we have it looked at. So uh, my, I would like to add an amendment to have to the resolution to have uh, a study done so we can have uh, an analysis of the finances and exactly what happens to services if there was a split countywide, because ultimately it will affect everyone. So I'm... I'm offering that. Um, I would hope you'd be interested in taking a look at it because we may be able to put this to bed one way or another after how many years of questioning what it means to split St. Louis County. And again, I think we're better together, but at the end of the day, wouldn't everyone like to know exactly what the facts and figures are, how it works, how a division affects the very same people that are, are putting us in office? Because I get asked frequently and I don't have a definitive answer 
on what it means exactly. So I would add that as a friendly amendment and we'll go from there. But thank you very much. It's been interesting reading, very interesting reading. If you have the opportunity, uh, staff can get it to you. It's, uh, I learned a lot when I, I just asked for some good reading material and last night I was at home, had the opportunity and, and I did, I learned something. So I appreciate it. And we go back to the late 1800s so this has been going on for a while. I mean, you were just a young buck in the state legislature then. It makes a difference. All right. Any Thank other you. comments by board members? Commissioner Rukavina. So I, I'm just looking for a clarification. Uh, Commissioner Yugovic, what are you proposing to amend? Is it instead of the resolved further, the last one, are you putting resolved further, or are you just wiping out the whole resolution and saying, that you're moving that staff and others put together information for the people of St. Louis County I, to I, see? What, what, is, what are you doing when you're amending? I don't understand what you're I, amending. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Commissioner Rukavina. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Rukavina, I, I, again, I, I want to be perfectly clear that I don't think we're ready to move this forward to the legislator to decide if, if we should vote on this yet because I want all my constituents to be educated on exactly what this means. And I think educated voters make better decisions. And I think that's something that, that we all feel strongly about, getting the information to all of our constituents when they have something as important as splitting, the possibility of splitting St. Louis County, that they know exactly what that entails because to be honest, I can't tell them that. And I don't know if anybody actually knows all the ins and outs of how it plays. So I, I, would, I would move that, that this not go to the, the state legislature, I would amend it, not go to the state legislature without having an analysis done and information set forward so we know exactly what it means. Uh, as I hear what you're saying, Commissioner Djibovic, I it sounds like you're not in support of the present resolution, but what you are in support of is more information regarding what would happen. Um, and I, I think Commissioner Rukavi is right. You couldn't add that as an amendment because it would, uh, uh, they're two completely separate kind of issues, my opinion, okay. but I, that's what it feels like. So the, the motion in front of us is the motion as to whether or not to support this in the present. Yes. Then it would be an amendment to pull back the, the, uh, uh, excuse me, the, res I wouldn't change the resolution. I want to support, I want to support the resolution, but I would like to have it added that we do an analysis so we can get this information. I, I, it, Yes, uh, Commissioner, do you want to say what you were thinking, yeah. Commissioner? Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Jugovich, are you asking to uh, um, vote on this one and uh, bring up a separate one, uh, s separate uh, motion uh, to uh, put forth that study? Here, I think that's what you were saying. Uh, you know, I, that, would, that would be fine, but what I'm, excuse me, Chair, I, what, yes. what, I'm asking, what I'm asking is that that before we go to the legislature, we have the information. So I, I'm not against the, the current resolution and not supporting it, but I, I would like to see that happen. So we could do a separate, um, if you felt it was best, whatever the group uh, feels they're most comfortable with, I just wanna make sure we get information. Okay, so I, my sense, given what I've heard, is we have a resolution before us um, uh, related uh, uh, that um, does not support or um, the supports the integrity of a one county, um, does not support the idea of uh, splitting the county. That's what's in front of us at this moment. Um, uh, and I, I guess, unless I see further conversation, I would look, um, uh, I'd ask, for a vote. Yes, Commissioner Djukovic. I, I would, like I said, I would support the resolution added that we have an analysis done. I think, Mr. Chair, I, let, me, let me see if I can weigh I in on this. I don't think it worked. Because I think if there would be a further resolve or 
get rid of the resolve further, the further or a further resolve that St. Louis County do an analysis of and present the facts once and for all on, you know, where the money comes from, where it goes, where the amenities are, where the jobs are, etc. I think that's what Commissioner Jugovich is concerned about, that he doesn't, how do you vote on a resolution when you don't know, I mean, it prevents the people from voting on it, this does. You know, uh, because I believe in current statute, Citizen Tom Rukavina could go out and get a number of signatures. I believe that's there in law. And I'd run around the county and I'd get, uh, I don't know if it's 5% or 10%. 28,000. 28, so one seventh of the citizens, then this as equal to one, one, legis one commissioner district is what you're saying. You look this up. Ooh, you're on the ball, Attorney Rubin. So as a citizen, I could go out and get one-seventh of the people who voted or the citizenship. Do you know that? No. Okay, so we don't know that. But the fact of the matter is, statutorily, there is a way to do this without going to the legislature and force the issue. But there again, how can you do that if you don't have the facts? And I think that's what... Commissioner Jugovic is asking, so I don't know if you amend it, Commissioner Jugovic, or you vote against this, because it doesn't solve what you're asking for. This says, bang, no legislation to divide the county, no information for the citizens. The citizens never get to vote, like they haven't gotten a vote for 120 plus years. If you want to add a further resolve that St. Louis County administration with the help of some independent person go out and get the facts and figures so you could prevent them you could ask county administration if they understand your wording and then that would solve your problem because right now uh, I understand what you're trying to do but I don't think any of us understand how you can do it with just and I would talking about it. I, you have to add an let me, amendment on, to this I want to recognize uh, Commissioner Boyle first, and then I'll... Thank you, Chair. Uh, you know, one of the things that I really enjoy about first being on the City Council and then uh, being on this County Board is the legislative process. And what I mean by the legislative process is that uh, I'm only one of seven votes on this County Board. And, you know, it's... We're being very reactionary right now as the rest of the board today. And one of the things that we do as process is November and into December, uh, we set our goals for uh, what we're going to do down at St. Paul, our, our priorities. Uh, those priorities uh, this past year were voted up upon by all members of this board. And the two priorities that we came up with was funding for the depot and the mental health initiative uh, for St. Louis County. By no means was there any talk of, of this measure at that time. I wish it would have been discussed, but it wasn't. What we're dealing with today is a commissioner that went down to St. Paul uh, on his own time and came up uh, with a goal and without talking to the rest of us. He or she can do that, that is fine, but I think what St. Paul right now today is looking at is where is the entire board on this issue? That's what we're talking about today because things have been set in motion already in St. Paul. So that's what I'm going to be voting on today. Um, Commissioner Jugovich, uh, off your amendment, we can look into this, uh, but I want to know what the cost of this study is and I want to know what staff time it's going to cost. My priority this year is decreasing 800 kids in out-of-home placement. Number one, mental health initiative, number two. Right there, uh, you know, it, let's look into this. But uh, reactionary, I'm not gonna be on this issue. If we wanna bring this back in November, December, and say, you know, this is gonna be one of our priorities down in St. Paul, so be it. If we vote on that as, you know, four out of the three members do it, that's part of being the legislative process. But at this point, I think we just gotta, the bullet and vote on this uh, as a board 
I wish it would have came a different route, but it didn't. Uh, sometimes the process is murky, but uh, myself, uh, anything legislative that I would like to see passed, I bring through you uh, as county board members. And if it doesn't work for me, so be it. Uh, but uh, I'll do my due diligence uh, as being a part of a legislative team. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I'll recognize Commissioner Jugovich, who was trying to speak, and I cut him off, and then Commissioner Nelson. I'll definitely get my point. Okay, Commissioner Nelson. Thank you, um, Chair Commissioner Jewell. I, I want this entire board to know that right now I'm stepping aside from my role as the chair. I'll turn this board meeting over to our vice chair because as the chair of this board, I'm supposed to be the statesman. That's what I'm supposed to be. But I continually come to board meeting after board meeting after board meeting and listen to one of my fellow commissioners personally attack other board members. And, and at some point, at some point, someone has to say something about that. And I have to tell you that, that this isn't the first time that we've had a commissioner go behind our back to the state legislature. Last year, there was a, a speed limit change that ignored public safety, absolutely ignored public safety, ignored our county engineers, in trying to protect public safety and changing a speed limit on a road near an at-grade bike trail. But of course, that commissioner knows better than our county engineers, knows better than this board, and quite frankly, better than the entire free world. When it comes to the constant bantering on, on the fact that we have Two years, every time we bring up anything to do with law enforcement or anything to do with the attorney's office, we hear about two years of probation up north. The fact that that commissioner ignored public safety and went out on the roads under the influence of alcohol and then got what he had coming in our justice system, plus two years of probation, that simple fact is not something that, that we here at the St. Louis County Board should listen to time and time and time again. The fact that I have a fellow commissioner who chooses to drink grain belt at lunchtime during the middle of a county board meeting. Hi, Commissioner, I'm going to take a break. Personal privilege, uh, we're going to take a break. Thank you. Uh, Rukavina. Well, Mr. Chair and members, uh, thank you. And uh, Commissioner Boyle, I don't know of any legislation that's actually even been drafted. I asked my state representative and uh, state senator if they would introduce legislation. To my knowledge, there is none. I might still urge them to do it. That's why we need the information. But even though I'm just one of seven, I have an election certificate, uh, Commissioner Boyle, that I think uh, holds the same weight as yours, so there's nothing wrong with me going to the legislature or asking my legislators to do something that I think will benefit the people of my district, number one. Number two, I have to point out to the public, Commissioner uh, Nelson, that once again you've totally distorted the facts. Uh, I went to the legislature because the town board of Eagles Next Township asked me to lower the speed limit from 45 miles an hour to 40 miles an hour. Uh, and by doing so, it became safer. So what you're talking about is totally incoherent uh, to me, but the town board requested it, we lowered it. Uh, yes, I had my former neighbor who was the Senate Chair of Transportation introduced the bill, or Senator Thomasoni introduced it, it got a hearing, it got put in the omnibus bill, and it got lowered. It also saved the uh, rail authority, uh, potentially a considerable amount of money in the uh, six figures, because by lowering the speed limit from 45 to 40, the right-of-way setback for the Masaba Trail 
didn't have to be as far and you didn't have to put in a brick wall to hold back the uh, land that was there. There was a big uh, rise in the um, rise in the land there and it saved the county money. It was requested by the town board. It made things safer because their fire hall is right there and they were worried about that. So you've totally distorted the facts on that. And, and as far as the statesman, you know, Commissioner Nelson, I've seen you bully people. You bullied Melanie Ford. You bullied Peg Sweeney. No, I'm not going to let it go Thank by because, Mr. Chair, really Mr. Chair. On, uh, uh, Commissioner Rukvina. No. I, I stopped Commissioner okay. uh, Nelson for the same reason. Well, Atta personal attacks on other members of the board are just not acceptable. And we, uh, you know, this is a topic we're discussing. If the comments are to the topic, um, that's appropriate. But talking about people bullying people or talking about people drinking are not pertinent to this conversation. So I, I will take a break again if we can't stay on the topic. Well, Mr. Chair, I was just addressing the statesman issue. Uh, if any of you read the Masaba Daily News or saw Commissioner Nelson on TV last night, I would not characterize that as being a statesman. That's all I'm trying to say, so I didn't start the uh, bullying fight. Uh, so with that, Mr. Chair, we can get out of here uh, uh, on, on time, I guess, for our three-hour meeting. Um, and I would just once again state this. After 162 years of this county being a county, that is the biggest county, in Minnesota and one of the biggest after 120 some years of citizens asking to be able to have a vote to split the county uh, or at least to look at the facts to split the county and actually ask to split this county. Uh, the citizens always have to vote on this and the citizens have never been given a vote and all I'm asking is pull the facts together and I do have to ask the question what are people so afraid of? Why has the county board been afraid to let the people vote on this? It's a democracy. It's not a dictatorship. So today I'm voting to, uh, I'm voting for democracy today, for letting the people have a voice. And for those that want to think that, you know, they're in tune and smarter than maybe the rest of their constituents, go ahead and vote for this. Uh, resolution. I think the resolution, again, is uh, putting the cart way ahead of the horse, but uh, I'll be voting no, proudly voting no, proudly, if it's six to one, be glad that I'm voting no, because this whole resolution is totally inaccurate or not even pertinent to what we wrote down here. And again, I won't even get into all of the, all of the different uh, I guess, unfairness, uh, and, and I hear it's healthy when we work together, as Commissioner Boyle said, but it's only when some folks want to work together on certain issues and on other ones, we don't work together at all. So with that, I'm glad we had this great discussion because now it's come to the attention of uh, everyone in the county, and uh, like I said, uh, it's going to be a little difficult for one of our commissioners to be running around uh, this summer and fall asking for people to vote when you'll be voting today to not let people to vote. That'll be rather interesting to see. Okay, um, with that, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Olson. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Commissioner Jewell. I just wanted to add a couple thoughts to the conversation. Um, the first one is, is we keep using the language of splitting the county. Um, and I think that's the wrong language here because splitting the county would come from an internal source. So you would have administration and the people in the county saying, this is cost ineffective. We have a reason to believe this county should be in two governmental hands. Um, what we're talking about is potentially there's a group of people that want to leave the county and form their own county. And I think those are two very different things. I just want it to be kind of pointed out that 
um, nowhere from internal within the county was it thought of that this might be a good idea for costs or for delivery of services or there's never been um, that intention. So this is coming from without the county. So we really can't use the word splitting the county. Um, we have to talk about succeeding and forming a, a new county. Um, and I, I did not hear from one of my constituents, not one, um, on this topic. And so I do not believe, um, and I'm not sure what other people um, have heard, but in my mind, um, I have not heard from anybody that this is a priority for them or of interest to them. And so I think that if there's a mechanism to get, if you have a majority of people or you get to the point where you have enough signatures where there really is a constituent call for this, then we should take it up and discuss it as an issue. But at this point, I don't see it and have not heard of it being a, a call from our constituents. So I haven't heard it from within the county as a cost benefit. I haven't heard it um, from constituents that they're really interested in this. Um, what I heard from my constituents and what I continue to hear is that they're interested in out of home placement, that they're interested in the cost of that to the county and how our children are being treated and why we have so many in out of home placement. They're interested in the opioid um, issue um, and they're really interested in dealing with kind of tax forfeited land issues and those have been the three top things that have risen throughout when I ran for office and since I've been in office those have been the things that people have brought up to me and those are priorities that we currently have and so I would like to see us continue to focus on those priorities. I did not want to vote on this resolution for a lot of reasons. One is I think that um, it's a little bit of a overreact and my initial impression was it was a little bit of an overreaction to some um, statements that were being made but on the other hand um, I think after talking to a couple legislators that they would uh, find it really important that there's a sense of how the county board feels about this since they are being approached and so because of that I think now we do have to vote on a resolution in order to send a clear message to our legislators because they've essentially asked for it. Um, so I will vote in favor of it for that reason. Um, in terms of the study and the, you know, kind of the facts, um, I don't think we, it's not one of our priorities that we've discussed, uh, the amount of staff time, the money, the resources that would go into it when we don't really have an internal or an external call um, as I see it, to do it um, is a waste of uh, taxpayer dollars. So I would not be in favor of that either. Um, but if there are other groups that want to be interested in, in looking at that and, and want information, I'm sure we'd be happy to oblige it to them. Um, so those are just a few of my, my thoughts before we move to a vote. Thank you so much, Great. Chair Commissioner Joel. Thank you, Commissioner Olson. Okay, seeing no other further comments, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Uh, two. Sure, could we have a roll call okay. vote, please? Okay, a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Joel? Abe. Commissioner Boyle? Yes. Commissioner Olson? Yes. Commissioner Rubina? No. Commissioner Stauber? Yes. Commissioner Ugevich? Nay. And Chair Commissioner Nelson? Yes. Okay, five to two, motion carries. Back to you, Commissioner Nelson. Thank you, Chair Commissioner Jewell, Central Management and Intergovernmental Committee. 